try this octopus jet. I'm talking here. Hey, I'm talking here. Don't you know nothing? I'm talking here. Hello, everyone. Steve Rizzo here, and welcome to Hey, I Am Talking Here. I'm very excited because I really like the uh, topic of uh, today's program, and it's called Everyday Miracles. What does that mean? Well, I was talking to Debbie about it, and we started talking about stuff that happened to us in our lives. And um, we believe that miracles happen to us more often than not. It's just that we get so caught up in the crap of life and our, our negative inertia that we let these everyday, I shouldn't say everyday, but maybe it is everyday, I don't know. These, these occurrences that take place, you, you can't acknowledge them because you're not looking for it. You're not aware that it even happened. And uh, they come in many different forms. And I, and I, I believe, I read something from uh, Marianne Williamson, uh, author and um a real spiritual believer, she said something about miracles. Miracles are nothing but a shift in perception. It's looking at something where at one point you're saying to yourself that uh, this is impossible to achieve. But then if you allow yourself a slight shift in the way that you're thinking, that impossibility suddenly can become very possible. So we're going to be discussing that um, miracles do happen more often than not. Boy, look at all the people coming in already. And, 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 and I believe that's true. And um, before we go any further, I haven't done this in a while, but we're going to do this now. Uh, this show is brought to you by Conversations with Bob, my latest book that came out. And I have to say this, um, the book's been out a little over a year. And for some reason right now, it's, it's going crazy. I mean, Amazon is ordering 50 books, 75 books at a time, 40 books at a time. And a lot of people are starting to get the word out about the book. And, and the book actually, in part, is about miraculous happenings. And um, if you notice that these things are happening, it, it, it lifts your spirit because you actually believe that um, there is a higher power listening to you. And uh, we have some really good stories to describe what it is that's going on. So uh, stay tuned and uh, please Everyone share this with friends, families, everyone on social media, because as you know, our goal is to get the message out. I don't even know how many episodes we've had, we finished. Maybe Bruce can tell us <clears throat> at some point during the show. But, uh, oh, look at Lynn. Love you, Lynn. Lynn shared already. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm talking about. And we have uh, Andrea is on. Beautiful. Hi, Steve. Hi, Andrea. How are you? You doing good? I can't hear her. Okay, fine. She's doing fine. Lori's here. I love my friend Lori. Um, Lori, it's so good to see. You. I knew you'd be on tonight. Fabulous book. Lynn read the book, by the way. All right, I'm going to shut up now, and I'm going to bring up my team. And we have a special guest, too, along with um, Debbie. Her daughter, Tori, is going to be on the show, and she's going to share some of her uh, miraculous things that happened to her also. But uh, first, let me bring on uh, Bruce, my director and my producer. And there, boy, you, you you brought yourself on real fast there, didn't you? Well, I'm a, I was already on when the book is there. Yeah, I'm, I'm on. Oh, you're on already. Yeah, because so that's the, the, the book is there. Because yeah. if I'm not if I'm not on, then this is what happens: is this, and all you have is half a face. Come on, boy, give me a break, will you? Okay. So that, that's that's um, the behind the behind the uh, the curtains. Yeah, behind. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. What movie is that from? Uh, um, Terminator. No, I'll, I'll do it different. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Yeah, still. Come on, the more. Wizard of Oz. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never heard of it. How do you do that that fast? See, folks, that's a miracle. Right there, that's a miracle. I say the Wizard of Oz, bam. <laughs> he does the lion. That's amazing. It's pretty cool. That's right. Thanks, Luke. Yeah, so if things go well, uh, how's your Christmas? Are you prepared for it? Oh, yeah. I'm definitely prepared for it. As a matter of fact, I was uh, before the show, I was across the street at my favorite Italian restaurant, and I was uh, giving Christmas tidings to my friends that were there hanging out. 
And uh, no, I didn't drink um, a lot anyway. I had a couple of glasses of wine. That was about it. And uh, hi, Sandy Archer. It's good to see you. Thank you for participating in the show. And uh, yeah, there she is, the wonderful Sandy Archer. And um, yeah, I, I, I said Merry Christmas to my friends. You know what I like about a setting like that as far as Christmas goes, Bruce? When you're at a place like that, my favorite Italian restaurant, Francesco's, it's real Christmas spirit. It brings me back to the time of uh, with Jimmy Stewart, you know? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Merry Christmas, you old building savings and loan, you know? Did, did you hang out with Jimmy Stewart? Wonderful life, that movie. What? So you hung out with Jimmy Stewart? Uh, I'm not that old, all right, pal? <laughs> wow, wow, maybe. The fact, that you, the fact that you know who Jimmy Stewart is means you are that old. No, no, it doesn't. Ask Tori if you know, Tori if you know who Jimmy Stewart is. Um, look, I'm, I'll be 72 he's in February. Jimmy, he's your Jimmy head head. Stewart died like 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, she's, okay? she's And he was like, head head. No, when he no died. Jimmy Shut Stewart up, I'm not talking to you anymore. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you bring your, your co-host on and I'll take off. Yeah, do that. That's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so great when Bruce could see her going, who's Jimmy Stewart? <laughs> oh, yeah. that Shut was up, good. Corey. Hello. Corey, you never saw It's a Wonderful Life? No. Yes, you have. I don't know who that is, and I don't know what that is. Okay, yet. we're watching it after the, sh after the show. Corey, it's okay. one of the most incredible, my, my favorite ones. sentimental Christmas stories you'll you'll ever see. It is amazing. It's it's probably my favorite. Is it in black and white? Yes. Man, you are old, Steve. I know it, too. <laughs> it's a classic. Everybody should know or have watched this this movie. Kellen Oh, Hello, Sandy. my friend. Oh, Sandy, I know who Jimmy Stewart is. LOL. Me too, Thanks, Sandy. Sandy, I love you. Yes. I love you. Yes. Oh, so, Andrea, thank you. I am so excited about tonight's show. Well, I am so pumped up about it. Well, you, and you should be because we got this title because of what happened to you last week. Yeah. And, you know, it was a very sad moment, but it was a very miraculous moment. And you know what? Let's start off the show with you telling the audience um, what a miracle is. And, and it's up to you as to whether you want to conceive it as a miracle or not. And when you tell the story, if you don't, I say there's something wrong with you. Because yeah. most people think a miracle is like Moses parting the Red Sea. That's a miracle. Yeah. Most people don't realize that no, it's it's a lot easier than that in, in most in most cases. I mean, things happen when you want an answer for something or you're you want a prayer answered or whatever it is, and these little glimpses, these little hints come to you. That, and if you acknowledge it, you go, Oh my god, that's the answer to my prayer. That's a miraculous happening. And people don't get it. So I'll shut up and you just tell me what happened. I, I'm giggling because Kellen Ann wrote. I am Steve's miracle. <laughs> I love her. See, that, that's our next episode when how people come delirious. <laughs> people, okay. And and Tori was laughing because you said, and I didn't drink a lot. Just not at all. I mean, maybe. That's right, Sandy. Not, not old. That's right. Not old. Yeah. Pat Lewis, if you've never, if you have never seen it, it's a wonderful life. You need to do so no matter how old you are. A hundred percent agree with you, Pat. Tori, do you get the hint so far? I Everyone's think, saying it. I think once yeah, we start uh -huh. the movie, you're going to say, oh, yeah, there's no way. I am your mother and that, you haven't seen that movie. That might have been like pitched with things that needed to go when I had to make more room for law school stuff. That might have been like in the trash Oh, bin. yeah, that's true. They only have what? so much space up there, I guess. Yeah. You can't why, do, why, do, why do parents have to do that to their kids? They have to remind them. I am your mother. I think <laughs> you forgot. Hi, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> in case you forgot. Okay. So let's just talk about this and share this. Okay. So uh, people who are very close to me know what happened. And I'm going to share it publicly because this story needs to be told. Yeah, it is. So unfortunately, my mother-in-law, Tori's grandmother passed away last week. And I'm not going to get into all of that. She did live a long, healthy life. And she was very sick and she didn't have to suffer too long but it's always sad. Mm -hmm. So we were all at the, finally, David called the kids home. They got back into town. We were all with her at the hospital. And then Tori and we have animals and they had not been let out or fed. 
and we were there probably all like it was, it was probably like seven or eight hours they had yeah. been out and so it was about i don't know 9 30 at night or whatever and um the nurse had come in and we thought she was about ready to go but then the nurse said she could go a couple of days like this and mm -hmm. she looked at her legs and so i said I, I i said to you i said go home and let the animals out she goes i'm not leaving i'm afraid grandma's gonna go if i leave and i said i don't the nurse just said, I, it's fine. I'll go. I'm going to run home. I will be right back. So I got home. I it's probably about a 10 or 15 minute drive to get home. I got home and I was feeding the dogs, let them out. And I was standing outside and I was waiting on the Doberman to use the bathroom. And it was 930 at night. And so it was dark. And I just was kind of like, looking out in the backyard and all of a sudden in the corner of my eye and I looked over pew, a shooting star went across the sky and I was like <gasps> I don't know about you guys but I may have seen two or three in my entire life and I just I had my phone in my hand and I texted my husband and I said oh my gosh I'm standing out here with the dogs and I just saw a shooting star and he didn't respond and about two minutes later, I got a text, mom's gone. And I went, oh, that was her. That was her saying, you weren't with me when I passed, but I'm okay. All right. And I had, I said, I'll be right there. And so I went back out to the hospital and, you know, all the things that you may or may not know, but afterwards and got there. And then we all finally made it home. It, it was probably midnight. We were sitting mm -hmm. talking yeah. at the table, Tori and I. And I said, Tori, I just can't believe what I saw. And I just, I mean, it's, to me, that is a miracle. That is her. And I was very close to her. And she was a very, very faithful woman. And I knew where she was going. She was no doubt. I've always said there's a special place in heaven for her. And she, that was a sign to me. That was a gift to me. Mm -hmm. And so as Tori and I were talking, Tori gave me the eye flutter. Okay. I do this thing where I flutter my eyes. I don't, it's, I yeah. Don't know and and so is. I know what it means. I, I don't know. So, I don't know I'm doing it though. Like, yeah. It's, but it's I go, I looked at her and I said, that was a miracle. That was a gift to me, Tori. I know what I saw. And she goes, I mean, maybe. And I go, no, <laughs> I know. I don't care. You're not going to take this away from me. Like I know. And so we finally go to bed mm -hmm. and I am not really fully sleeping. So I'm up and down and about three 30 in the morning, I get up for good. I'm just like, okay, I'm not, I just, I'm going to do some laundry, whatever. So about 4am Tori gets up mm -hmm. and she goes, you know, I just really need to get, I have a, she had a final at, at noon that day. So she needed to get back to Columbus. So she was leaving at 5am. <clears throat> now you tell on. from your perspective what happened. Yeah. So it was, speak up. It was about, <laughs> I'll try to yell. It's not hard for me. Um, so I'm on my way home from Columbus from Chillicothe around five o'clock in the morning. I don't know if you know the route. Not many people do. It's 20, it, the highway 23. It goes like all the way up to Columbus straight shoot. And, um, I remember like leaving town. I was about 15 minutes out of town and I was like looking up at the stars. I was like, wow, it's a really clear morning. And I was thinking about what you said to me. And, um, that night my brother and I slept in the, slept in the basement. I slept in the chair. He slept on the couch when we got home from the hospital and something that Dalton said to me, which is my brother was, I just hope she wasn't scared. And it really bothered him. He was like, I just hope she wasn't scared. And that sat with me for a while. And as I was driving, I was about 15 minutes from home from my apartment. And I was looking up at the, at the sky and I said, Grandma, I really hope you weren't scared. And right then, a huge shooting star just <laughs> shot across the sky. And it's the type of thing that makes sure you make sure you go <gasps> like that. Because, and I was just like, I was kind of frozen for a second because it was so bright. And it just, it was, had such a long, like bright tail on it going across the sky. And I called you like 15. So times. I had just laid <laughs> finally down again. And she's like, ah! Ah! And I'm like, oh, what happened? And she was like, no, mom. And you said, I said, I just saw the shooting star. I said, grandma, grandma wasn't scared when she died. And I mom. called my brother too. I said, I said, Dalton, 
she was not scared. She wasn't scared when she died because that's that was her saying, no, I'm fine. It was and then scared. my other response to that was, see, I told you, yeah. you shouldn't have doubted that was your grandmother. <laughs> she came in strong for you, too, to say, this is me. Yeah. So you what, see, that's a miracle to me. That exactly. And, and I think the thing that made it even more miraculous, because you've shared how close you were with your mother-in-law. I mean, both of you. Oh, and, God. and, and you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are not that close with their in-laws, but you were. Yes. And it's that special bond that you had that she knew, which the spirit of constituted who she really is, had to acknowledge to you, your Tori, your question was, was she in pain or and it was like, no, man, I'm 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 where I'm supposed to be. That's what that meant. And and the same thing with, with you, Deb. Folks, that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a miraculous happening. Now you could disagree, and and you know, fine, that's your belief. But this show is to let you know what we think. Yeah, that's a miracle. So if you don't, if you don't like it, this is our show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you don't like it, turn the fuck off and go back to your own life. You know what I'm saying? No, no, that's all I'm saying. That's what I'm but you saying. know what? And and I will add to that. I will add to that. There's two stories. When my when my mom passed away, she was in a coma for days at, at the hospital. And I'll, I'll never forget this. My PBS special was shot weeks before in Chicago at WTTW in Chicago. It was a huge special, big audience. I mean, it was really cool. And it was supporting, uh, promoting my new book, Becoming a Humor being that's the first book I ever wrote, and um, I'm at the hospital. My mom's going in and out of consciousness, and I have to be in Chicago that next day. If I waited, I would have to wait eight more months to promote the book, which really would have mm -hmm. uh, uh, put a damper on book sales and popularity of the show because you you have to hit it when the book is fresh, you know? So I wasn't going to go. But all of the doctors said to me what they your doctor said to you. I guarantee you the chances are she's going to be in this state for a couple of more days. Go tomorrow. Do the editing because I had to be in the studio with the three, with the uh, director of uh, WTTW, the producers and two sound guys. There were four people in that studio and I had to be there with them to edit the 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 presentation I gave. And and if I didn't do it that day, as I said, many months later, I would have to do it. It would have ruined everything. So all the doctors came up and they said, look, she's going to be this way in a couple of more days. You do what you have to do and come back home. You'll be fine. My family, my father, my brother sat me down and said, Stephen, that's what mom would want. Do it. Mm -hmm. I flew to Chicago, two o'clock in the morning. I got a phone call from my wife, my wife, Gina, and she said she just passed away. And I was like, oh, I didn't sleep the whole night. I go into WTTW. I'm sitting there. I'll never forget it. The director's here. The, the, the director of the studio is here. Two sound guys are there. And they knew me from previous meetings. And they said, Steve, something's wrong. Are you okay? Mm. And I said, my mom passed away last night. And I just I was in that's like a shock. And they said, what the hell are you doing here? And I took a deep breath and I tried to explain. And I couldn't. I just lost it. You never know when you're going to lose control of your emotions when someone passes on. Mm -hmm. It can happen when you're in a produce of a supermarket. It can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. And it happened then. I couldn't answer. I just lost it. And the director, the woman... I'll never forget her. She comes up to me. She comes up to me. She has her hand on my shoulder. The, the director of the video that we're trying to fix, he's has his hand on my shoulders and the two sound guys, every, everyone is crying. We're all, and, but I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit I really lost it. And I said, I should have been there. I should have been there. I, I don't know if she understands why I came here. And it's all I kept saying. And then all of a sudden, there were eight TV monitors that we were working from to edit. 
So you put the audience on this monitor, you put the screenshot over here because it was a six camera shoot with a with a jib camera up here. So all of a sudden, all of the TV monitors started flashing, becoming a human being, becoming a human being, the logo of the show. Oh, wow. And the director looked at the two sound guys and they said, it's not even on. Sure. They're looking at all the buttons. It's not on. Why are these things flashing? They couldn't understand why becoming a human being. And I immediately composed myself. I said, that's my mom telling me I'm where I'm supposed to be. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Let's get this thing done now. I mean, I was so confident. And they were just like, it took them a while to like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. They couldn't understand why these monitors were flashing mm -hmm. when it wasn't even on. It's crazy. So, it's crazy good. That's a miracle. That yeah. is, there's the power of, well, love too. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. That motherly love. And you were so close to her. But, and, you know, and it's just like I said to you with my brother, you know, when I gave my brother's eulogy, I'll always talk to my brother because the spirit that constitute who that person is lives on forever. Mm -hmm. And if we could acknowledge that, it's such a glorious, wonderful, profound thing to hold on to. And I believe that. It's not that I, I believe it because it'll make me feel better. There's, you've got to know that there's more to you than your human shell. We're spiritual beings living in a human shell. Yeah. And that spirit is constitutes who you are. And a lot of people can't grasp that. But I know that to a fact as a fact in my life. And from what you two experienced, it's the same thing. And you know what's amazing about your story, Debbie, and, and you, Tori, is that you were fluttering your eyes at your mom going, Aren't we getting a little melodramatic here? <laughs> I don't know if it was that that tone, such as a little bit. A little bit. But when you saw it. You just went, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In so many words. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, she, and that's and my she, point. I mean, folks. Year, I mean it, I thought something horrible had happened. Well, I called she you was, 15 times. So <laughs> if something had it was had like happened, you would major crying. And yeah. I was just like, what is going on? And then she told me. And I was like, that's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. You. You can't, and no one, I don't care who it is. I don't care if you're the biggest naysayer on the planet. I know what I witnessed. And I know that these guys were looking at all the buttons and they're looking at each other and they're saying, the one thing, the one thing wasn't even plugged in. Mm -hmm. You so. know, I want to say this too. There may be people who are watching who have lost someone and they feel like they've never gotten a sign. They've never gotten a miracle. But maybe you have. If I wouldn't have been looking up, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have seen the star, the shooting star. I yeah. think that um, if you're open to receiving miracles, uh, they're going to come to you or you're going to recognize them, I think, is the key. You're going to recognize those small happenings each day or in times of need or in times where you're struggling through something, if you say, I mean, I could have been even staying, I don't remember. I mean, we were all exhausted, but I know I, I mean, even since she's been gone, I talked to her. So I could have even been saying, oh, Norma, you're, you know, I know you're getting ready to go. I don't know. I, I don't know, but I talk like that. So yeah. I, I have conversations with Bob all the time, which is your book, which is, Bob is God. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not always in a church pew. I know I don't, it's not like I go to church constantly like I used to, but I, I, I can be in my car driving and have a conversation Yeah, um, and making sure that I'm open to receive the blessings that are meant for me. You know, I'm not, I, I'm just, I don't know. What am I trying to say, Steve? What what you're what you're trying to say? I, I get what you're saying because there are some people who could have seen that same shooting star with the same scenario, but they wouldn't have acknowledged it. They wouldn't have felt it as, "Oh my God, that's my mother-in-law answering me. I am so blessed." Some people go, "Oh, look, a shooting star," and go back into their same hurt feeling. You know, true. My point is, you gotta you gotta be aware. That, that they do, miracles do happen. Oh, uh, I, yeah. It, and it reminds me of that, like, that story. Is that is it in the Bible or is it just like a story where it was like that guy, the flood was coming and he got on top of his house 
And oh, that's the story. Yeah, and that's, God sent him a newscast that said it was going to flood. And he yes. kept saying to God, like, help save me. He'll save me. A boat came by. A helicopter came by. And he kept saying, no, God's going to save me. And then he died with the heaven and said, God, why didn't you save me? And God said, I sent all these things. It's kind of like that. Like, if you are looking at life, that's an everyday thing. Like, every yes. day happening that, that, that's a perfect analogy and that's so right that's what i'm saying because people expect the miracle to be something dramatic so mm -hmm. you're this guy was on the roof and the floods coming up to the roof and he's praying for god please save me and a boat comes by and says come on in we'll save you and he goes no no i prayed to god god's going to save me all right the boat yeah, goes like by. Gonna, and a yeah. helicopter comes by which is a, yeah which is the other other part of this is sometimes what you pray for isn't exactly what you get no you get something else yep but it's still a answer to your prayers even if it's not exactly what you asked for pat mm -hmm. says when the time comes it's always a bad time for us left behind the signs don't always come as an obvious sign sometimes they come at an unexpected time very yeah. true very you true. know pat having said that uh, I, I will tell you another story. When my dad passed away, um, again, he was in a he was in and out, and they said you got to. I had to go to Hawaii the next day. I was speaking for three thousand people in Hawaii, and um, I they said you just go, don't stay as many days as you're going to give your speech and come right back. And I said that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I get there soon as I landed at the. Uh, Maui Airport, my sister called me. I called my sister, and she said he just passed away. And I was like, oh, my gosh, they just don't want you there. when they." Well, I know. I know. So, but it's almost the same scenario. So I, I was, I dealt with it. I was fine. Like I said earlier, you never know when it's going to hit you. So I went to sleep that night. Um. Woke up the next morning. I had a very early presentation to give at 9 o'clock a.m. And I got up and I was sitting at this gorgeous restaurant right overlooking the Pacific Ocean. The restaurant opens at 6. It's all outside. It's gorgeous. If you've ever been to Hawaii, you know what I'm talking about. And um, I believe I was at the Ritz-Carlton. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the ocean. And I started thinking of my father. I'm the only one in the restaurant. And I feel it coming on and I'm going, oh, no, 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 no. I put my sunglasses on and I just was doing this and I was I was crying. Mm -hmm. And I, as I'm doing this, I'm saying, I need help here. I need to know that my dad's going to be OK. And um, I need something. I got a speech to give soon. I got to get out of this mood. I can't I can't go up like this. So this waitress, Hawaiian woman an elderly woman, she comes up to me, she sits down, she grabs my hand and she said, Mr. Rizzo, are you okay? I don't know what possessed me. I looked at her and I'm going like this. I'm wiping the tears from my eyes and I'm going, this is the worst omelet I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she starts laughing. She goes, I heard people complain about the food every now and then, but I never had anyone cry over it before. So we started laughing and it just, mm -hmm. it just released the tension. And she was the one that told me she was like the angel in this yeah. scenario. She said, this is your father letting you know that you can do it. Cause I told her I have a speech to give and not even an hour and a half from now. And um, I was able to go up on stage and tell them how important humor is. And I told that story that happened to me that morning yeah. on how humor, my sense of humor, my humor being took me out of that. And if there's one thing that my father had was an incredible sense of humor, yeah, you know? And, and so to me, that was, that was a miracle. Well, you know, and like that, you know, in comparison to what your mother did, yeah. you know, that was more subtle, but it's a, still a miracle. Yeah. You, know, you had someone come to you and hold your hand and give you that love that you needed in that moment. And that was, I feel, divinely guided. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And sometimes angels come our way, you know, and I I, I, I definitely believe in angels. So uh, I, that, that woman, that waitress could have been 
I mean, for her to sit down next to me like she knew me and grab my hand, yeah. you know, most people wouldn't acknowledge. They would say, let the person cry. But she knew <laughs> something. Cry it out, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you said angel and I appear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm one of those people. I do do that to people in public. If I see a girl crying, mm -hmm. I go up to her and I'm like, hey, are you okay? Like, yeah. I know it probably freaks people out. No, I think that's what you should do. And if they that's don't. That's what you would do. I, I know. blame you. I know. But you used yeah, to weird. say I scare people. <laughs> yeah, I start, I'm starting to scare people now. <laughs> no, I think. And if it, you can tell if it's welcomed or not. And if it's not, you just you let them be. But yeah. some, more often than not, if you feel feel that, that someone needs a little extra kindness. If you're feeling that from somebody, I would say 99% of the time they do. And you should. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I'm open to that all the time. Yeah. And, I, and Lori, thank you for saying that about my father. I appreciate that. Bruce, can you bring that back up again? Lori. Your Lori, dad was so cool. Yeah. Lori, Lori knew my dad. A lot of people, a lot of young people might my dad, when he retired, he was a bus driver for West Babylon School District when I was teaching. My brother was a principal there. And uh, everyone knew my father and loved, loved my father tremendously, as, as I did and still do, of actually. Of so, yeah, folks, uh, you know, that's, that's what this whole show is about. It's about miracles happen more often than you well, think. But if, if you're not aware of it, you're going to miss it. You know what I'm thinking about. No. No. What? Um. I just, the other thing is like, we're, we're talking about loss and signs and miracles that are given to us from our loved ones who have passed. I have no idea what you're going to say. How about this? And we've <laughs> talked about this before and it's in my book, but Tori was applying for law schools um, and wanted to get into Ohio state, which is where she got her undergrad from. And she got a denial letter mm -hmm. and she was really upset. She had come home. And we talked about it and all of that, that entails. Okay. So, I mean, she was just, she had her heart set on that. Well, anyway, um, she took off and was driving home and, um, I called her and I said, Hey, you know, we had this conversation and everything. I said, I just, do you ever like talk to God? Cause I, you know, like I said earlier, I do, I just have conversations and stuff. And, um, she goes, well, I mean, I pray, but what do you, I, I said, no, just like, you know, now you have a decision to make all the other schools that you did get into. You got to now, you know, you're not going to Ohio State. Where are you going to go? And I said, maybe you can just talk to God and ask for signs of, you know, where you should well, all of this. Well, anyway, she um, was really feeling down and she got back to her apartment and there's an enclosed section for mail. And she went into, and it's locked, you know, and everything. And she went into there, in there and she had her official denial letter from Ohio State. She had gotten They not email. only email you, call you, they also get put it in They writing. give you a hard copy so you can maybe display it. <laughs> yeah, you put, they put it, in your, put it in your scrapbook just to Yeah, let's you. just remember that. So um, she said that it was, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, to remind you how much your life really sucks. Loser. <laughs> By the way, so, let me give you the list of the people that did make it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not one of them, but here you go. <laughs> yeah. So um, on, she said it was kind of like sticking out of her mailbox and it was a yellow envelope and it was Mort's College of Law. And she grabbed it out and on there was a pink sticky note. And on it, it said F, you know what I'm saying? But they spelled yeah. it out. F Mort's, which is the law school. Mm -hmm. And it was like... It made me laugh. It like, made her laugh. Somebody. And she called me. She goes, I have no idea why someone would put this. Probably someone else that got denied. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, it was like that right there. And also she's a rough talker. So like it was a message to her, like, get mm -hmm. over yourself with this. You've got all these other places that you have gotten into. Let's, yeah. you know. So anyway, it's like to me that like kind of brought her, brought you out of it a little bit. It made you laugh. Mm hmm. And it was like, all right, lick my wounds. Let's I will move on. say, though, law school really does humble you even before you get there. So if anybody like wants to get good at rejection, they should, get, <laughs> they should apply to law school. I'm telling you right now, I got good at that. You get good at like rebounding each time. You just got to like. Mm. Well, that's just it. Humor helps you to rebound. And that's a miraculous happening in itself. That's what I think. And so that's what my whole book com about becoming a humor being was about. It, it, and, and my brother's story was in that, too. You know, it's all about. 
taking something that's really, really killing you. It, you know, I, it, a few hours before my brother passed away, I think, Debbie, I told you this story. Uh, hospice was at the house. And, um, you know, when hospice comes, he he told the family he's going to surrender. He's not giving him up, but he knows it's his time. Mm -hmm. He's grateful for the life that he had. So we all knew it was just a matter of a day or two, right? So I came by to visit him like I always did. And he's sitting there on the couch like he always is. And I grabbed his hand. And my brother has a very sick sense of humor. And we all do. The whole Rizzo family does. And he, he said to me, I said to him, I said, Mikey, how you doing today? He goes, well, Steve, I'm dying. How are you doing? So I said to him, well, apparently I'm doing a hell of a lot better than you are. And he laughed so hard that, that it was hurting him. He didn't even have the energy and tears. And I was laughing. And it was not too long after that that he passed away. But I, I look at that as a miraculous happening because mm -hmm. he left this planet with his humor being inside of him and inside of me. And that's what I'll remember him by. Now, a lot of people could look at this from a totally different perspective and say, how dare you say that to your brother? But no, hey, man, it was the thing. He knew where he was. He knew and what was going to exactly happen. exactly what he needed. And, and you also yeah. know one another's type of humor and yeah. it worked Absolutely. yeah that's Absolutely. true for, me, for sure yeah I, it, steve has a lot of similarities to dalton mm -hmm. too i've told him that before if tori wants to talk to god deb you can give her my number what would joe do <laughs> oh, <laughs> wwj joe do yes <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're too much. That'll be my next book, Joe. He definitely has, he Joe. has a humor being. Yeah, yeah. What would Joe do? What? That's pretty funny. Um, you know, I, I can tell you that there's so many different things that have happened to me. Um, I'd like to have, I wish people would chime in. Like, I know the people who are watching and listening have something that they can say, oh, I remember this one time, you know, and even things like, if they're, if you're, oh gosh, you know, I got late and I got in a traffic jam and then this and that, and then you get to where you're going and find out if you had gone when you should have been, you could have been the one in the accident. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. just, you know, if, if you take life happenings and just pay attention, I think that you notice a lot, a lot more and yeah. you're more aware, you're more aware is the word I'm trying to find. And then you're able to appreciate these miracles or and, and, and the more they happen and the more you acknowledge it the more you see them mm -hmm. you know when i was making the transition from comedy to speaking i was pretty nervous because i was doing very well as a comedian and i every every now and then a part of me just kept saying you know are you doing the right thing how am i going to do this and there was one time when i was just really in the negative zone and i remember i remember praying and i was maybe saying what do i do you know i, I don't even know Am I doing the right thing? How am I going to get people? How am I going to attract this type of people when I was used to just making people laugh? Or do I have what it takes to give them a message? And who am I to do this? And I'm saying, what should I do? What should I do? And I kept hesitating to make the move. And I so I prayed and I said, I, I expect an answer soon. So I don't, yeah, that's, that's Not to say answer. what to do, but I, I'm so, so, you got I, you got ten fucking minutes. All right? <laughs> so I I pick up my remote and I don't watch much TV and I'm I'm clicking and all of a sudden one of my favorite movies comes on and it's The Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner mm -hmm. and I clicked it and it was right on the part where he's sitting with James Earl Jones in the baseball stadium. And the sign comes across and says, build it and they will come. I knew right there that was the answer. And the answer was, you don't have to know how it's going to happen. Just, Just do, do it, it and it'll happen. And that's and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And I get things like that all the time. But here's and, the weird part. And I know this about you and because we've talked about this before, but you got to finish by saying that show then you fell asleep with your TV on. And one night you got up at like 3.30 in the morning. And when you woke up, it was exactly that same. The same thing. That same scene. Yes. 
Yeah, and, and it it's happened like, quite, it's I'm like so hey, in case you, you forgot. I'm so glad you remember that because that scene came up quite a few times when I wanted an answer to something. You know, either that or I, I would think about because I was voted least likely to succeed and I'm putting on the TV and all of a sudden Rocky would come on, which is the most inspirational movie. What the Ow, hell is she laughing at? The reindeer eye. Do you just poke me in the eye? <laughs> <laughs> she was laughing that she didn't know you were least likely, you were voted least likely to succeed. What a terrible, is it a superlative thing? Is you didn't know that? Yeah. 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 Oh, that is terrible. So, <laughs> what? Well, what? he really yeah. showed them. I'm glad, so I'm glad you could see the humor in that, Tori. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I know. I just want to know. Who, what, who's the asshole that was like, you know what, this person. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of my classmates that did that. There are and, a lot of and, assholes. Yeah, you don't want to hear something else funny, Tori? I was told by a guidance counselor in front of my mom and dad when I was 14 years old that I didn't have what it takes to go to college. <laughs> That's and a little less funny. <laughs> 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 I'm still thinking. <laughs> I'm still thinking. She's <laughs> rating. She's rating. She's when rating she, the absurdities. Yeah. The absurdities. yeah. Okay. I think it was funny that he just God, that is so there funny. Because I was like voted least likely to speak. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's not something you would like be proud of. And so, but here's the thing. You, there are things that we forget in life. That's not something you would ever forget. <laughs> she assaulted her mother with an antler. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, that is exactly what happened. Oh Got me right in the eyeball. With that. And, and, we're, and we're all witnesses. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, geez. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Well, I, but what I was saying is in life, we forget things. That's not something that you would have ever forgotten. And thank God you were able to work through it throughout the years. It wasn't something that was easily done. And you even say to this day, there are times where you question your abilities because of what you were told yeah. as a kid. Yeah. I still have those negative labels come back to haunt me sometimes in the middle of the night. Because those labels are, you can never get rid of them, no matter who you are. The only thing you can do is keep them at bay. They're etched in stone, but you can keep them deep in the caverns of your mind so they don't come to the forefront when you're trying to exceed, to succeed and you're trying to get to the next level of your life. They always come forth. You got to be careful. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You know what happened? What, remember what this person said. And you're not aware of that that's happening. Your subconscious runs 97% of your life. And it doesn't know the difference between true or false. It only knows that information that's being thrown at you. Yeah. So it can direct your life into the wrong direction if you're not aware that it's happening to you. I don't like that. I don't like that. Well, it's Fact. science. <laughs> I don't like that. Change it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She didn't like that 97% of your thoughts are in your subconscious. And what that is what Laurie said. I would love to know what those losers made of themselves. Yeah, really. Oh, by the way, Laurie, they're all dead now. <laughs> or at least dead to you. He knows it. Yeah, guy. dead to me. That's such an Italian thing. You're dead to me. You're dead to me. You? You're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm serious. That's such that's so Italian. It's pretty scary. But you know the the irony of it all too is <laughs> that you actually went back to that same school and taught as a, yeah. As a teacher. That's yeah, I I taught English and I was a counselor for kids with behavioral problems, proving once and for all that guidance counselors are not fortune tellers. That's right. So and also, I just, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm kind of old school in the way of we got to be in reality. Not everyone really deserves a trophy, but I would never tell someone what their capabilities were or weren't. And I mean, Tori can attest to this. I've always told my kids, you can do anything you desire, anything that brings you joy, anything you can do anything you want. You can do it. And I mean, maybe over the top like that, but I don't want anyone to tell me or to tell my people that I love that they can't do something. It happened one time to her and I went crazy. Yep. Someone told her she couldn't do something. I said, don't you ever yep. tell her that she cannot do something. Yeah. And, and, and that's the way it should be. But, you know, back in the day, my mom and dad were from the old school they were great parents. They did the best they could with what they knew, which is all you can expect from your parents. They could yeah. only do what they what they learned about life. So, so you get, get a free pass. You got him. You hear him? That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. I can only do what I can you know, do. They said yeah. it's your parents' first time living too. Yeah. Yeah. 
So my mom and dad looked at this guidance counselor like, gee, he's got to know what he's talking about. Look at his title, guidance counselor. If he doesn't know, who does know? So not only did they believe him, I did. Not only did I let this guy tell me what I couldn't do, I let him tell me what he thought I should do. Ooh, that's it. Ooh. Yeah. But I, you know, I was fortunate enough to turn my life around to see alternatives. I had a brother, an older brother who guided me, the one that guided me to go to college and said, if I can do this, you can. And, you know, it's, it's the way life is, but life would be so much easier for everyone. And that's what this episode is about that acknowledge these little miracles that take place. And remember, a miracle is nothing but a shift in perception. It's looking at something where at one point you're thinking it's impossible. Then with a slight shift in the way that you're thinking, that impossibility suddenly becomes very possible. And you can create your own miracles just by that slight shift in the way that you're thinking. I and love that's, that. That's I what that. I know. That's what I know. I know. What, I do. know. <laughs> what do you know? That's just a beautiful thing. I love when that. I, 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 we'll, we'll leave with this. When I when I wrote my book, Becoming a Human Being, I, I gave it to my friend to look at, my friend Jeffrey Slutsky. And um, I said, what do you think? He goes, man, I think it's really good book. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Now? I thought that was like a made up name. <laughs> you just make a comment. I wasn't going to uh, Slutsky. I don't know. The way he said it. Well, Slutsky. He was a male prostitute. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> a Jewish male prostitute. So, uh, which means he was very expensive. And, yes. Um, High quality. No, but he, uh, <laughs> he, he read the book and he said to me, now here's another slight miraculous happening. He said to me, it's really good, but what the book really needs is the story of someone famous. And if you could have someone who's famous where humor, their sense of humor helped them to turn their life around, that would bring more validation to the book. I thought about it. I meditated on it. I prayed about it. The very next day, I was at LaGuardia Airport on my way to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm sitting next to this very attractive woman. She's got sunglasses on, but I know I know who she is, but I couldn't really tell because she had the sunglasses. And she took the sunglasses off, and I looked at her boarding pass. It was Naomi Judd. You, you said, know, hey, um, you want to be in my book? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, wait. So she's sitting there, and you know who Judd is. She was in the oh, Judds, yeah. and they had all these country songs and everything. Oh, yeah, she was incredibly popular. This was in 1991. I No, ni 1998. Yeah, 1998, 97, 99, something like that. Anyway, so I'm talking to her, and um, we started talking about what I do for a living. I did comedy and stuff like that. Now I'm a motivational speaker. She goes, oh, my God, you're a motivational speaker. And I said, yeah. She goes, I, I went from the music business to comedy, to, uh, to uh, speaking too. I speak on love and spirituality. I said, wow, that's amazing. And then she told me her story. She told me her story on how she was diagnosed with hepatitis C mm. when she was a nurse many years ago before she was famous with the Judds. And that disease caught up to her and they gave her six months to live. When know. she was a nurse, she pricked her hand with a needle and unknowingly she, she caught hepatitis C. So this doctor told her that she had six months to live and you might as well start making plans and put your life in order. And she, she got really pissed off at the doctor. And she said, but I survived. And she told me the things that she did. And I said, I got to ask you a question. I said, would you say that your sense of humor helped you to live with this? She, she started crying. She had tears. And she looked at me. She goes, Stephen, if it wasn't, she grabbed my hand. She said, if it wasn't my sense of humor, I don't think I never, ever would have been able to handle this. It was that catalyst that helped me to bounce back all the time. And I realized, oh my God, this there is the person is. that can be on my book. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm writing a book. It's called Becoming a Human Being. She goes, oh my God, I love the title. I, I said, would you mind? And we were about to land at this time. If I talk to you, could you give me your story? And she said, she gave me her home phone number. Mm -hmm. And that next week I called her and we talked for every other day on the phone. And that last chapter in that book is her story on how humor helped her to turn her life around. So that's a miraculous happening. That mm -hmm. is. The, that's what I'm saying. Brought together. Oh, that's so good. I don't know who that is. I I'm didn't have to look all these people oh up. Oh my God. Do you know who um, Kevin Costner is when he was talking about the field of dreams? Mm -mm. 
We got some binge watching movies to do this holiday. Do you like country music? Curry? Kind of. Okay, well, look up the judge. She was with her and her daughter. Um, you know, she's not, is she the was she the mom now? Yes, she, she died. passed. She looked like the daughter. She was so young looking. She, I know. She died. Yeah, I know. What was her daughter's name? That's what I was trying to think. Naomi and. But they uh, were the judge. They were the most popular country. Why did you? Don't I don't know, it. Tori. I was gonna, but the thing is, there were there were three of them. There's the other girls. Uh, uh, what's it say? Let me see. Ashley Judd was her Ashley, daughter, who was the actress. The actress, yeah. Who was the actress? Yes. The judge of America. Would you see the name? Winona. Winona. Winona Judd. That's it. Anyway, yeah. folks. Um, <laughs> They're Winona, like, like oh, now that she's on the phone. <laughs> oh yeah. See, people were telling me. Oh. Let's uh hey. let let's read some of the the uh. Go ahead, Deb. Do you read them? So we have um. Oh, uh, oh hey, Cannon. Hey, girls. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you for being here. That's a cute picture, Cannon, of your family. I love that. John um, Gammon was telling me, why not a lady? <laughs> it's why not on my friend. Hold on. I'm trying to find it. Thanks, John. <laughs> Hello from Indy. Awesome. Laurie, what does that? Oh, whoa, your mom. Awesome miracle, too, for sure. What was Laurie saying that she was one of them? I, I'm one of them. One of them that probably doesn't remember the judge. Probably. Maybe. I'm one of them. I don't know. Just, yes. There, I think, uh, Bruce, you did a good job in the back bringing comments up today. Yeah, are, Bruce. I think, you got, I think you covered them all. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Bruce, you did it. That's a, mir that's a miracle. That's oh, a miracle thank right you, there. Pat. Thank you, Pat. We appreciate your condolences. And thank you, Sandy. God love you. You're such a sweetheart. Um, I appreciate that. I like Elf. <laughs> me too, Kellen. Oh my gosh, you have got. Well, before we go, let me tell you this real quick story. I had my Elf costume on today. I mean, like Elf, you know, the green big shirt with the yeah. Okay. And I had a Santa hat on with it. It was kind of a day. And then we bought this brand new coffee maker, two sided one, and the pod side wouldn't work. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me! Like, this is a nice Cuisinart coffee pot, whatever. I had to take it back, <laughs> but I had already thrown away the box. Because the one side worked, but when I tried to use the pod side, like two days later, it didn't. So I'm uh, like, I don't even have the box. I don't even have the box. So here I am, and I'd ha I've had kind of a day. And so I looked at Tori, and I'm like getting everything ready. And I got an elf outfit on and a Santa hat. <laughs> and she picks up the coffee pot, and she goes, if they don't take this back, I'm scared about what's going to happen if they don't. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to, I do not know how I'm going to react if they don't take this back. <laughs> then about like 30 ho, minutes. Ho, ho, ho. I know. And then she was like, mom, you have an elf costume on. And if you go like snap on somebody because they don't make a return, but they, they gave me another one. It yeah. Was really and funny. she came in the house all smiling. She goes, I didn't have any problems. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> oh, that's a miracle. <laughs> that's a miracle. Did, did they give you a new one? Yeah. yeah. That one doesn't work either. <laughs> so I don't know. And she said, it's, it's got to be, be us. us. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I do know one thing. I don't I don't know if I'd ever want to go hang out with you two for an evening. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Because we talk at the same time. What do you mean? <laughs> you would you don't like Santa and and the reindeer? <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I it was a joke, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't funny. I, I all right. I apologize then. I like when you when you make me laugh. I'm I'm getting defensive. No, I, hey. I'm just thinking that I would be outnumbered. You know, because oh, well, like, you can, know how I, we always say to each other, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I would have both of you telling me, don't tell us what to do. Well, Who are you? We're both, we both can be kind of mouthy. Well, you, we both love on each other. And five minutes later, we're like, you're going to make cookies. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, we're like, blah, blah, blah. Let's go. Have Sorry, your, your, your assignment, you have to watch It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, we're going to do that. We'll snuggle. And it's do in that. black and white. Right. You're, there you go. <laughs> can't wait good times so we'll put our fuzzy pajamas on fuzzy yeah. socks yeah you it's have good. to watch all right we yeah. probably lost people they're like i don't know they're talking about a coffee pot and the one chick has on reindeer ears that she just jabbed her mom in the eye i think we're tapping out on this one i think we are i think it was a great show thank you tori for being on you should be on a little more rough and it would be great because the two of you cracked me up <laughs> um Glad but thank you all and i thought this was a great way to wrap up and say merry christmas too because i think this 
miracles has a lot to do with Christmas. So a hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I love yeah. it. So no, they, no, no, no. they happen more often, folks. You just got to get out of your funk and acknowledge them when they happen. That's all. Pat says, I don't know, Steve. I think they'd be hung, fun, fun to hang out with. Yay! We're <laughs> oh, going to keep that Pat. around. Yeah. Steve's like, it was a freaking joke, people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get hate mail now. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Merry no. Christmas, Lori. I'll talk to you soon, I'm sure. Anyway, I love you all. Thank you. You guys stay on. Everyone. Have a very Merry Christmas. Talk to you soon. Oh, ho, ho. And all that stuff.